YouTube, we are in the top 16 of the Meta Weekly every single week. And with you supporting these videos greatly by watching as long as you can, liking, commenting, subscribing for the algorithm and all that nonsense, it allows us to keep on doing what we love to do, posting these weekly for you. Hajime. There can only be one winner. And you're looking at it. Let's go. Uh, Abscission, pop our set monster to search our deck, and the Ash Blossom is going to negate. You search for the Peaceful Planet Monadium card search, which could search for a Vsauce also, and uh, that completely ends our turn. Now, the Monadium Imaginings is supposed to fix your hand. Reveal a Monadium monster or Vsauce to draw to. So, not Monadium card, unfortunately. I feel like there's so many small details that Konami messed up with Monadium, which could have made the deck a lot better. I don't know why they were so careful with the deck. Ashuna, free special summon onto the field if we control no effect monsters whatsoever. We have Monk of Tenyi, special summoning our Adhara. This is where we would Ash. Ash negate, eh, but we had to set our Ash to make a play. That is unfortunate. Baxia, spin the Ash back in the deck, pop in the Monk to reborn the Adhara from the graveyard. By making the level nine Chao Fang, the opponent cannot activate light monsters. They are now legal. Light monsters, and also what happens if it's if this is destroyed, you could search your deck for a tuner. And isn't there another effect? When you're when a monster your opponent controls is destroyed, you could special summon a worm monster from your deck. That rarely happens. So very well done. We're gonna be searching for the Grandmaster Mo Yi chain link block and the Grandmaster from being ashed. We got 5,600 damage here, and we're gonna easily turn this into lethal. Long Yun discard summon itself plus a token, make the level 10 synchro, and just like that, we have game. Where's Baron to floor? We can't make Baron to floor because we're locked in a worm type monsters only. Nonetheless, lethal damage. Sword Soul, mid range, Monadium, top end combo. So, combo, super combo deck versus mid range combo. And let's see how it goes into game number two. Reinforce the army. We have just an impermanence, but when do we imperm? I would argue that this could be a bad impermanence because they could have a rhyme heart to chain destroy to dodge the impermanence. It worked out anyway, that's fine. We already have the primitive planet search for a scareclaw card, which will be our Vsauce Star Frost. You could also play the Tierlament Field spell, which searches for a Vsauce Star Frost. Grabbing our Rhyme Heart, Rhyme Heart popped the right card, which as I said, we could have had in our opening hand to dodge the impermanence. We got the Meek. Meek could special summon onto the field. If we have the Rhyme Heart, we could pop the Meek, which will trigger the field spell and the Meek to summon a ball and summon a ball. We got two balls. Now, level four tuner will be one of the balls. And let's see what we do from here. This is very well done. We're gonna talk about all the disruptions we have here. We have negate anything. We have negate anything. So that's double negate anything. We have Dispater, destroy a monster. It can negate a monster if they have a banished card. And then Apollo say, negate, negate, negate. So that is six disruptions and we're gonna draw into a fifth card. Can we play through this? There's no way. No way. We ain't playing through this. Six disruptions. There we go, now we have five. Five. Disruptions, Dispater chaining to the Ashuna to destroy it, putting it into the graveyard so it does not get special summoned. We're gonna be summoning Ecclesia, activating Ecclesia for the Apollo SA to negate. And after that negate, we still have four more disruptions. The trap negate anything, Baron to floor negate anything, Apollo negate two more times. Let's take this into game number three. We have no disruption. All right, full combo. completely locking him out of dark. So if you want to cheat a little bit, we could use the website. Let's type in Monadium. Monadium deck type, not the name Monadium, and we'll type in dark. So the most popular dark monsters cannot be special summoned. Can't summon Astroloud, can't special, you could normal summon right card, can't special summon light heart. I mean, this is really disruptive. We. All of these cards cannot be special summoned. So what is non dark that we could summon? We're locked into being, uh, I should have typed in monster, not main deck. 
The monsters we could summon that are not dark, uh, Rhymeheart, Vsauce, Baron to Floor, Excel Synchro, but it can't go into the Dispater. This may be an auto lose just like that. It not only can we not summon dark, we get anything negated. Our monster gets negated. They could pop two cards in the field plus negate a monster and Ash Blossom. So somehow, Sword Soul has five disruptions plus you can't special summon dark. This is not okay either. What the heck? Field spell searching for a scare claw. Right cart will be normal summon. We can't link it off. We're now gonna be playing the peaceful planet, which will be negated unless we finger that ash. You can also cross out designate if the Baron of Floor decides to negate. Does not negate. We're gonna grab the Rhyme Heart. Now, the Rhyme Heart can protect the right cart from being negated by the Grand Master if he attempts to negate with that. So very well done, making sure to have this before normal summoning the right cart. Triple Tactics Talent, take control of a monster, forcing out a negate. So what we have left is Imperm, pop two. So we have double monster negate plus pop two. Right cart does not, uh, Imperm, we could dodge it. Now Rhyme Heart could dodge the negate, but then Grandmaster can negate on top of the Rhyme Heart dodging the negate, thus it does get negated. It won't search for another arrival, and this card's not hard once per turn. We could use it multiple times. There you go. Make he knows, we all know it. Negate the right heart. Now, if the Rhyme Heart were flipping it face down, it would be negated, then not negated, but if it leaves the field, it's still negated. Makes sense, right? Rhyme hard activate, and all we have left is blackout pop two, and we can't special summon dark. Abscission pop the rhyme heart, and let's read how this card said. What it says is, destroy it, and if you do, add a peaceful planet. So we're not going to be able to add. That in fact does stop it. But isn't peaceful planet? Uh, well, if we already have a peaceful planet, we also search another card instead. So completely stopping it, <laughs> banishing Max C because why not? Arrival could not reborn the right card. It, you know, we could only target a Scareclaw or a Vsaw, Starfrost, and the Graveyard. So this is a dead card against Protos. Damn. Five disruptions plus Protos. And we played through every single disruption. Every single one. Very well done. Okay. Yeah. That was our play. Double set Imperm plus called by. And now we are purling it up. Purely is here, Imperm on the Lily. That I would say is a good Imperm. Now do not default your my friend Purly into the middle column here. My friend Purely is going to be Ashed. That is correct. Imperm on Lily, Ash on my friend Purely. They're both valid choke points. Sleepy Memory summoning our Purely. Purely on summon, reveal the top three, randomly add a Purely card among the three to our hand, which will be our delicious memory. We're going to exceed this off into Princess Sprite. Princess Sprite, mill the top card of a deck. If, it's a if it is a spell or trap, add it to the hand. There is our Pot of Pea. We're gonna Zeus up the fields. Let's Zeus it up. Get rid of Imperm, get rid of Called By. And do we have to be careful on what we detach? Because there's called by, we do not want him to finger, uh, it doesn't matter. We're gonna have to detach everything. You get to finger whatever you want. Imperm negate, why not? Uh, would it be better to let him deal with his own my friend purely maybe? Maybe you don't negate. Uh, you know, I guess negating's still good. We're gonna be negating the Lily by fingering the one in the graveyard. Negates, there's no purely leap in the graveyard to dodge the finger so that does go through you're not able to add you're not able to exceed using the graveyard just like that all right and we were using the effect to exceed using the graveyard since we already added now we are going for the big reveal the limited to one pot of pee dig deep six cards off the top of the deck here go spell negate any graveyard manipulation which i still don't know what they're playing graver <laughs> Greffer, discard Greffer, send a dark monster from the deck to the graveyard. Orc is harp horror. This is maxiable, not ghost bellable. But I said manipulate the grave. Well, this it's an effect to manipulate the grave. Harp horror is a cost to banish. We have the Orcus send from the deck to the graveyard. Orcus nightmare, Orcus nightmare banishing to send from the deck to the graveyard. We have the world legacy wand, which will be special summoning a banished card back onto the fields. Damn, ghost bell sucks, huh? Galatea. 
Galatea is going to be adding a card from the deck. By returning a banished card back on the deck, we have the Babel. Babel's going to make our effects quick effects from the graveyard. We're now making Dingursu on summon. Send a card on the field to the graveyard. Goodbye to the My Friend Purely. And yeah, that's a ton of drawn cards for that Max C. Zeus is going to be sucking up a material from anywhere to after a card is destroyed. Now making Verte Anaconda. Anaconda copying a fusion spell from the deck. Fusion Destiny. You cannot ash the effect of Verte Anaconda copying the effect of Fusion Destiny. DPE wiping out two cards in the field. Ghost Spell can actually negate DPE activating in the graveyard. Now let's go and let's pop off. My friend Purely is going to be popped. We're going to use Happy Memory to protect ourselves from being popped. So we do not get popped. We do get to search. Three cards revealed. Randomly add one. Ghost Spell, negate the DPE. But not yet. Now it's going to activate. And now we finally get to whip out the bell. And with that, we should definitely be ending on an X purely nor or just winning this duel right here, right now. Discard to summon the Lily again. This is after Max C. So, you know, you maybe want to disregard this win as being a valid one. Equip the beauty, equip the field spell. We got three material. Equip that material. Equip another material, five material. Do we have the X purely happiness? Yes, we do. Can we end the duel with happiness? Suck it up again. Finally, with five materials, we could overlay a boss monster, but we're not going to. Bro, didn't you? Do we just like have game? Why do we got to do this? Could, couldn't we just X purely happiness for game? I, I think so. I mean, maybe my math is off, but I think that was game. W were we under pot of P? Did we deal half damage or something? No. We are going to spin back the dark. Malicious summon from the deck again. We're not ashing the malicious play. Spin again. We have spin one more time. A final spin. Ash negating the harp horror from summoning a monster from the deck. And just like that, we could finally finish this duel. My friend purely reveal three. Come to me randomly. One of those purely cards. Reveal from our hand to come forth and exceed into the E purely happiness. Yeah, yeah. let's scoop it up. Let's take this into game number two. Now, Prior Life went first, but bricked. Can we go first again with a better hand? Show me what the deck can do. Lure of Darkness, chain the Maxi to it so that they don't draw into an Ash Blossom or a Called By to stop our Maxi. Come to us, Harp Horror, banishing, just ending our turn. You know, we have Impermanence at least, plus a Bestial. And we swing in to then main phase two. We're not making Zeus, we're making the uh, X purely North, the purely leap. So what we do, if we have any more cards to suck up, which we do, we have Imperm and Allure of Darkness to make a fat X purely Nor. Plump, suck it up, do not chain the leap to this. Wait for the resolution, then leap it up. We have no sleepy memory to draw cards, but we have a whopping seven material X purely Nor unaffected from activated effects. So what's the out? The out is goddess. But do they let you goddess? No, they're not gonna let you goddess. <laughs> so as soon as you revealed, you're not gonna let me goddess, I'm out. All right, Maxi is uh, fun. Maxi is fun, very good. I'm always happy to see branded Despia in the tournament as they have so many different lines because we always know where Dragon Link's going. It's the same line, the same road. Grand Despia's got so many different roads to travel down. And I don't think the way to play the deck is salt. Even in TCG, I don't think it's salt. I think it's quite contentious to say that there is a singular way to make your plays. I have to pause this duel. You could set Albaz and pretty much fuse with their entire field contact fusion, but not everyone's playing it. Are you playing it? Are you playing? He is. He is. Albo Linatus. 
Set Albaz plus any amount of dragons in the field. Contact fuse the entire field. How do you stop it? Baron of Floor doesn't stop it. Borland doesn't stop it. Borlode doesn't stop it. You can have all the negates in the world and it's not gonna stop it. Now, Branded Beast. You have to Branded Beast. <laughs> That's the only way. You have to Branded Beast. You have to flip up the beast on the set with your toggle on. You gotta pop the set. There's no way you're doing it. There's no way. We even got Super Poly. Okay. Is it set, set? Huh! <laughs> That's it! The whole field is gone! Triggering the regain to reborn the Dispater. We're gonna activate the triple tactics thrust, adding a card from the deck to so the hand. Ash is going to negate. Damn. Very well done. It, even after doing that, it looks like we're still gonna lose. That's sad. What the heck? Full contact fuse and we still lose? That's disgusting. What the heck, Dragon Link? Reborning our safer with the Dispater. It's because of the regain. Being able to resummon Dispater is disgusting. We're gonna. This. This summons Borland onto the fields. I know a lot of people aren't familiar with follow up plays with Dragon Link, but what the heck? Reborn Borland. Whoop. Just like that. We got Super Poly, though. So we fusing them again. We got Contact Fuse the field. Super Poly Fuse the field. Furious Dragon. We could pop a monster to pop any card in the field. Yeah, we got to stop that, okay? The Dispater attempting to be resummoned a second time with the regain, that is not okay. Now we have a dead Branded Beast. Safer recycling a card in the graveyard back to the end, which will be the Levineer, which will be non-target pop two cards in the field. So, uh, yeah, goodbye to everything. And again, we're still going <laughs> to How do we contact Fuse and Super Poly and still lose? Dragon Link has infinite plays. Like, I'm okay with Dragon Link existing. I just don't think Konami is. The deck surprisingly is not that expensive to build. And it's just stopping you from wanting to play newer decks like Monadium. Branded Lost. Quem send a branded card from the deck to the Grave of Fallen Albas card that is. A Dear Servant locking us out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn here. Triggering the Quem to reborn the Cartesia. We can't fuse with it right here. Albion setting from the deck a branded banishment which could reborn a Despia or level 8 fusion. The fusion has to be properly summoned. So right now it's dead. It cannot reborn the Albion. Bestial Lubellion, do we ash that? We are actually ashing a Bestial Search because it could be quite disruptive to the Quem trying to reborn or even the banishment trying to summon from the grave then fuse the fields. And fusing the fields with banishment is going to be an important play. Cartesia activating the fusion summon with the Quem. That will trigger the Branded Lost. It will also make the banishment activatable. We have Albion. Albion, which will be able to go into, we can go Lubellion or we can go into the Mirror Jade. You can't chain to any of this. We can't do anything, if, even if we had anything activatable. Now, Nibiru works even on your turn during the main phase. So we're on summon number one, two, three, possibly four summons after this all resolves. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, and then uh, four. If you go Lubellion, oh God. Okay, we went into Mirajade. That's four summons. We're not getting, <laughs> we did not get, we're not getting Nibiru'd unless we summon again. Furious pop in the Albion plus the field spell to stop the send from the deck to the graveyard. You discarded Nibiru when they're one summon away from triggering it. Mirror Jade banishing that Sharnga off the field. I do not think so. That could trigger the Quem reborn from the graveyard, which would then be the fifth summon. Albion is going to be grabbing a branded in red. And I think you don't need me to tell you that this duel is now over. And it's worth noting that we used Nadir Servant. We did not summon from the extra deck whatsoever. That just shows the strength of this deck. Imagine that they got Max Seed. They would not have cared because they could use your turn to do all the special summoning if you Max Seed them on their turn. That is why Branded is so powerful. Nadir Servant being negated by the Ash just like that. Also for the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you cannot special them for the extra, that's part of the effect. Thus, we could still summon from the extra. 
but that has completely disrupted our main turn one play. The Belian is not being negated by the Ash. We have Safer tributing from the hand, searching for our Magna Hut, triggering the Serenir, sending another Lubellion from the decks of the Graveyard, banishing the Serenir for the Magna Hut, activating to search during the end phase for another Dragon. As the Chaos Angel on summon, unaffected from monster effects, and none of our monsters can be destroyed by battle, banishing the back row branded in red. We have Striker Dragon on summon, searching for the Boot Sector launch, chain link blocking the Ash from negating it. We're going to be banishing for the Wyvern Burser, now making Romulus. Do we negate the Search of the Ravine, or do we negate the Ravine itself, or do we negate the Chaos Ruler? What do we negate? Add back the Lubellion in the Graveyard. We're going to discard Lubellion, and now we negate from sending a Abso Router from the deck to the Graveyard to search for the Rocket Tracer, which we're still going to do because we're fingering the Ash. Negate. Very well done. Boot Sector launch on the Tracer and the Recharger from the hand come forth. Pop in the field spell to now summon our Chaos Ruler. Mill the top five cards of the deck at a light or dark among the five. We got Sharnga. Sharnga free special summon. Not a lot of people are playing the Sharnga. Sharnga quite interesting to see here. A free special summon if there's a 2000 attack or higher on the field. Now making the Dis Pater. We have Chaos Ruler banishing in light and dark to reborn itself from the graveyard here. From 8,200 damage in the field to now over 11,000 damage. Now making the Pisty come forth as we tribute the Chaos Ruler to summon our Lubellion to activate our Pisty if we have a card pointing to it, which will be the Triple Burst Dragon. Pisty, special summoning a banished or engraved dragon onto the field to where it's pointing to. Now making Borland Dragon. We haven't even activated the Dispater yet. Reborning our Caliber onto the field, negating the Caliber to reborn a level four non-tuner to now make a Borlo Dragon. Damn. Unaffected from monster effects onto our Synchros. We can negate or destroy a monster. We can negate any card effects. We can negate another monster on the field. And just like that, lethal damage. Dragon Link. All right. Bullish Burial, sending the tragedy from the deck to the graveyard. You could use Gold Sark also to banish the tragedy to grab the Alubur. Alubur is here grabbing our branded loss, which will protect us from the Ghost Bell. Very well done. We are going to be summoning our Albion, and it actually only protects you from Ghost Bell if you use your card effects correctly. If you put Branded Loss on Chain Link 1, you could then get Ghost Belled on your Lubellion. By correctly putting Albion on Chain Link 1, you are protected. You can't chain the Ghost Bell to the Lubellion, that is. So Branded Loss is going to be searching. Coming to our hand, Albion Shrouded Dragon, which will be a draw plus send a card from the deck to the graveyard. And we are fusing into the Lubellion, which is Ghost Bellable, but not because of the Lost, because the Lost is protecting it. We can't chain. And now we have Mirror Jade. Non-target monster banish. Fallen Albaz sending a retribution from the deck to the graveyard. We're now tributing our Albion for our Lubellion. You cannot go spell that because it's not an activated effect. It's an inherent special song for the grave. We could pop any card in the field within the main phase. We could banish any monster non-targeting. We could negate all cards on the field on the activation of the Branded King, including our own cards except the Mirror Jade. And we have Branded in red, which could be negated by Ghost Bell. Let's go. Ooh, we Zodiacin. Pot of D, that's going to be an Ash. No Ash, not negate. <laughs> we are We're not even trying. Really? You know, there is benefit to your opponent not knowing what you're playing for game two, maybe. Uh, but we're not playing side deck. You're just like, you know, I, 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 this is too good. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm out. Unicorn gets searching for the Theosis. We're not dealing with any hand traps besides the Serenir. Is that going to be relevant here? We got Dimension Shifter ensuring that any card sent to the graveyard will now be banished. Is this deck more Zodiac than Kashtira? Well, what exactly is this? See, we struggle to put a deck like this on the website because... Who chooses the first name, Kashtira or Zodiac? Banishing from the deck. People were saying, hey, Plunder patrols now on the tier list. Yeah, but not really, and it already fell off. The problem with that is that all three Plunder decks were different. 
So, you know, ideally we would have listed them under three different deck types. It was Plunder Lab, Pure Plunder, and then Plunder Runic. So technically three different decks in listed under one is what got on the tier list. But I actually like that though. Having rogue decks maybe listed under the same name to see that it did well enough to check it out. We have Dryden, pop a card in the field, plus any card sent to the graveyard is banished. Plus we're gonna summon a Fenrir from the deck. Now, don't worry, uh, cash tier is balanced because you can't use Maxi if you have the Arise Heart in the field. Now, we are also our under shifter, so if we out the cash tier Arise Heart, everything is still gonna be banished. So let's get to it. Can we break this field? Fusion deployment could summon from the deck. Ash could still negate even though cards are banished. Albaz is gonna be discarding a card on summon to fuse with the fields but it has to be used as part of the fusion summon. So if you can get it off the field by Dryden popping it, no fusion summon. <laughs> That's enough. I'm out. No, thank you. Now, I mixed up game one and two. So Bun is going first after losing game two, which we viewed as game one. Unicorn Valor is going to be negating and it's gonna pay off because we have no birth, no Theosis already in the hand here. Very well done. Pot of D will be the follow-up. Attempting to follow-up activate. Let's get banishing. Did we lose anything too good here? We got the Zodiac Barrage, which I'm not too much of a fan of because of Max C. I don't think this could really exist in TCG. I think it would be way too good in TCG. Hammer Kong it up as we now link this off into the Tiger Mortar. What are we doing this? What are we doing? What are we doing? This is Utopic Draco Future. Monster negate and take control and we're indestructible by battle and card effect. How good is that? Is that our only disruption? Yes, it is. A single monster negate. So when you're playing against a monster negate like Draco Future, you're always thinking, how can I chain link block? We're obviously not gonna be able to chain link block this. Albaz is going to be negated and taken control of. And that did take up our normal summon. We have Albion sending a branded fusion. To the graveyard as we now banish Gangrenol and not a Lubellion. Okay, interesting. Ghost Bell to negate the Retribution, adding back the Branded Fusion. That is something you definitely do not expect to see. And a Deer Servant could be a Maximus search. Bro, really? Albaz? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I guess we can't really do much. Oh, we have Quem during the end phase. Okay. Sending Albaz. So if a card moves from the extra deck, we're gonna summon that Albaz. But why would a card move from the extra deck? Well, like this, this is how. Give Utopic Draco Future to negate the Quem anyway. Oh, we're maxing instead. Okay, we're gonna let that special summon negate the Albaz. It looks like that's what we're gonna be doing. Chain Maxi, Giant Chain Pop. Now the reason you chain Maxi to Maxi is if they have Called by the Grave, they're forced to negate their own Maxi. All right. Otherwise, their maxi resolves, then you maxi, then they call by, their maxi's not negated, your maxi is negated. Albaz is here, on summon, discard diffuse with the fields. But we got no chain link block. No block on the Albaz, negate and take control, as the branded trap in the back row is no good. You need a branded fusion on the field to then negate the whole field but the branded fusion. Interesting deck, Zodiac Cash Tira in the top 16. Very happy to see it. Pot of Desires. We are banishing 10 cards just to get ashed, or are we going to cross out, designate, negate the ash? Of course we are, mate. Negate! Now, we don't have ash for the max C, but the cross out, designate would have still negated that. Maybe cross out would have negated impermanence instead. You always got to wonder if you could see their hand, would you, how much more different would your plays be? We got the planet grabbing the Vsauce Starfrost, which is gonna be, we're gonna be less reliant on the Vsauce Starfrost when we have the level eight synchro because that is a Vsauce itself. Maxi being activated, called by the grave to finger the C. Did we draw into that called by? Of course we did. We did not open up with it. Goodbye to the C. And I can't believe how often the right card is getting in permanence without the rhyme heart popping it. Where is your Rhyme Heart play? Light Heart searching for another field spell, which is not activatable, but the Vsauce popping it will then make it resummonable from the graveyard. Let's go. 
Lightheart, Come to Me, Reborn, and now we are making Chang Ying. That's something I did not expect to see. 4,400 boosted per banished card, banishing the Vsauce and the Rhymeheart or Rhyheart to summon our Astro Loud. And just like that, 70, huh? We didn't have lethal? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Not enough for lethal damage, leaving him blinking red at 100. Now drawing for our turn, scooping it up. We are out of here. Very well done. Thank you. So the deck that just won is going to be getting that new support, the new Vsauce and Matera. I, actually, I don't think this is Monodium. This is just Scareclaw, Kashtira, maybe. We are popping off with our op optimal opener with the Unicorn. We're going to Theosis our Fenrir onto the field, searching for a Scareclaw Kashtira, making our Shang Ri. Rise Heart is going to be banished from the deck, potentially a bang. That's right. We got Big Bang to bang our Shang Ri. When the Shang Ri gets banged, you add back to your hand a Fenrir, and then you resummon it back in the field. Also, locking up a zone. A good zone to lock against Scareclaw would be right behind the extra monster zone. So when they have a Light Heart, they then can't summon the right cart behind it. So it, not too good with that block right there but uh, actually you know the thing is cross sheep needs to point to the bottom left and the middle so if you lock up the bottom left in the middle that could stop cross sheep or you like i said behind the extra monster zone to stop the light heart play we got birth and we got the arise heart anything sent to the graveyard will be banished instead do we activate the shang ri does not activate shang ri because then it would allow the opposing player with cast your cards to make a one card arise heart we have Imperm to stop the Arise Heart, a very good out to it. Now special summoning our own Fenrir. Into the Scareclaw Kashtira here, which will be triggering the Fenrir to banish any card on the field face up. Banishing it face down. The target's got to be face up. Now Arise Heart forcing its activation here. We have Fenrir triggered off of the Fenrir, banishing the Birth off the field here. We could swing into the Arise if we want to. So another detail here is not activating the Shang-Ri after our own Fenrir banish a card face down. We do not want to activate this whatsoever. Very well done, grabbing the Arrival. We are going to be linking this off into the Lightheart. Lightheart searching our deck for the Field Spell, which will search for another Scare Claw. And I was wrong, it actually does have Monodium in this deck. We got Vsauce, Star Frost. Field spell popping a card in the field because there is three monsters in the field that are in defense. Searching for the Rhyme Heart. Arrival arrived to me. Right card back onto the field. Not activating because we already did. Rhyme Heart popping it on summon. Search our deck for a Monadium card. We got the Meek. Meek is a free special summon if we have the Rhyme Heart. Vsauce popped the Light Heart. Now we're going to be linking this off into Cross Sheep. We're going to be using the Light Heart to Special Summon because we control a Vsauce as we now make a Chaos Angel. Under the Cross Sheep to not block the summon of the Vicious Astro Loud. We actually could have summoned it to where the Cross Sheep was pointing to. So this was a little bit of a mistake, but not a big one. We would have boosted up our field by an additional plus 700 attack. Astro Loud on Summon, popping the Fenrir plus triggering the Cross Sheep to reborn the Meek from the Graveyard. Now synchroing into a Baron to Floor to take out the Scareclaw Kashtira with 7,700 damage on the field. Can we make this lethal? Dark is here to put us at over 8,000 damage. Reborning the opposing Arise Heart, your Arise Heart is mine. Now at over 11,000 damage, that is gonna be a 2-0 victory. Lethal damage with the Dark. Very nice. Very nicely done. I'm so interested in how the plays are going to be so much more different with the Vsauce and Retira coming in the next pack. Chaos, space, we have no disruption whatsoever, so we have to sit through a full Dragon Link. But again, remember earlier in the tournament, Albaz set, fused with their whole field, contact fuse, but not everyone's playing the Linatus. And before I check, let me see how common that play actually is. Lenatus, Lenatus, there we go. Let's click on this to see the analytics. 27% are Chads. Is Vsauce's balls one of them? Let's see. Uh, Lala Wolalulu instead of a Lenatus, maybe. Uh huh. Yup, I don't see it. Nope, we do not have it. We do not have the contact fusion play.
Now, what are we gonna do with our super polymerization? What is this field? We have negate a monster, negate anything, destroy a monster, and uh, yeah, triple disruption. Okay. Let's break it. Super poly cannot change to the super poly using Borload and Borland, double dark, dark on dark action into a Garura. Garura of Sense of the Graveyard will be drawing a card here. Dispater not negating, but it will be destroying the Cartesia, thus stopping it from being summoned onto the field from having an Albaz in the grave. The cat is going nuts. My stream might be disconnecting soon. Adding the Albaz to then fuse with the field in hand into a Guardian Chimera. Guardian Chimera could be negated by Ash, but I don't see Ash. We're gonna draw two, pop one. Mercurior is also chain link blocking from a potential Ash. We're also going to be returning the Mercurior back of the deck to draw one card off of that. Randomly drawn into the Ball Drake, adding a Kit, which is a free special summon. If we have an Albaz Fusion on the field or engrave, which we do not, we have not used up our normal summon yet. Pop in the Dispater to then banish with the Serenir. Albaz on summon, fusing with the Chaos Ruler here. And we now have Mirror Jade putting the field at over 8,000 damage on an open field, but there is a Ball Drake. Ball Drake to block an attack. Mirror Jade to banish that fool off the field. I do not think so. Chimera can't attack directly if summoned with the brain in red. So this is where in the TCG, you just look at your opponent in the eyes and hope that they surrender, not knowing that fact. I don't think Riveri is going to surrender. Did not surrender. Kit in main phase two, come forth in special summon, grabbing a branded fusion, and I can't believe we have not even activated this. This means we misplayed, huh? Yeah, we should have done this main phase one for game. Looks like we didn't know or forgot that we could not attack directly. Now, the Mirror Jade used up its once per two turns effect, so we got to get it off the field, then reborn it if we want to use it again. So technically, we don't really have much disruption. We just have Rinbrum. If an extra neck monster effect is activated, we can negate and spin a monster back to the hand. We have Banishment also, which is more disruption. So let's see. Could Reborn from the Graver then fuse with either side of the field. Rebellion adding a Jerusalem. This could be anyone's game here. I cannot believe Visa did not win. Banishing the Mercurier, Mercurier activating. Also returning the Mercurier back in the deck to draw a card off of it with the Regained. What are we grabbing here? We have it in Albion. Unfortunately, Mercurier cannot search for another Mercurier. That's now making the Triple Tactics Thrust activatable, not grabbing a TTT to the hand to take control of a monster or draw two because we already have it. Wait, did he add it? I, I, I missaw that. He added Chaos Space because he already had the TTT. Let's go, wait. You drew? You drew into it? Okay, did we already have it? I, I, I didn't see it. Taking control of the Rimbrum. Your Rimbrum is mine. We're going to be summoning Lubellion from the graveyard here, triggering the Jerusalem to send the Chimera to the graveyard. It is targetable because there's no polymerization. We now have Branded Beast to pop any card on the field within the main phase only. Chaos Base summoning a Levenir. Levenir is going to non-target pop two cards here as the Banishment reborns from the graveyard and the Branded Beast... That's not a... Huh? That's not a continuous trap. It's going to... What? MST does not negate. Sometimes it does. We are going to come forth. What are we summoning? We are summoning our Chimera, then fusing. What is our fusion summon play? Fusing the Kit and the Rinbrum to make a Dragostapelia monster negate. But then it got destroyed by the Levenir on the resolution for the non-target destruction. Branded Lost also being triggered to add an Albaz monster from the deck to our hand, which will be our Mercurial, which is activatable to negate. Yes, it is. You could use both effects of the Mercurial in the same turn. So get ready to negate. Chaos Angel, which can't be negated because it's unaffected from the Mercurial, banishing the Lubellion off the field. Chaos Space, randomly drawing a card, drawing into Small World in uh, Dragon Link. That's kind of interesting. You have Borlord being returned back to the extra deck. We are summoning our Collapse Serpent to go into the Striker Dragon. When do we Mercurial? We cannot, we could negate that if we want to. We can negate the Recharger from resummoning the Borland. I think you have to stop this. Yes. Huh? Is there a reason we could not negate? Your opponent activates a monster effect while you control the fusion monster that mentions Albaz, and we just summoned a Borland. I think we didn't negate because Recharger does not target. 
it targets the striker, but you're not summoning strikers. So it's non-target reborn the Borland. You don't know Borland's being summoned until it's there. Timer, you think? Maybe. It is turn three. Negate the Mirror Jade. Mercurior can't negate that, by the way. You already used Mercurior? No, 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 no. Uh, he, I, I can't show you. If this card's banished, you could add a card. He only used that effect. So it, you can't see it, but he didn't use the first effect. And you could use both effects. It's not like Tragedy, where you can only use one of the two effects. It was activatable. Oh my Jesus, the timer had to have been low. Damn. All right. Very interesting duel. I enjoyed that very much. Thank you to both of you. Let's hop into game two. Aluber with the Imperm Negate. Generally, you fusion deploy Cartesia on the field and then fuse with Aluber to dodge the impermanence. Maybe we're just playing one Cartesia, but this could summon from the hand, but then it, you know, it's less uh, of a good play if you're summoning from the hand with the deployment. But uh, what are we doing now since that happened? I mean, isn't it still worth it to deploy Cartesia? What else? Uh, we summon Albaz, then special Cartesia? Like, right, we could have just, I guess, Albaz, special Cartesia, then normal summon Alibur, then fuse Alibur and Albaz into a Lubellion could have been a play dodging the impermanence. But maybe we didn't want to play in the max C. Like, I, I guess, like, if they max a you summoning Albaz, you would summon Cartesia instead. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know why we didn't protect our Alibur. Making the Albion. Albion gonna get impermed again. Double impermanence. You will not be summoning the Mirror Jade. Oh, yeah, we did leak, by the way. I gotta take that off the screen. Lubellion searching for the Jurasworm. Jurasworm banishing the Albaz from the graveyard. Come forth, tributing the Jurasworm to make our Lubellion from the grave. When do we super poly? Get ready for that place. Sending Albion to the grave. It will be activating during the end phase to set up a branded fusion play. So we gotta do something big because that branded fusion is coming next turn. And right now we have no way to stop it. We're turning back to Lubellion, randomly drawing into a Gamma that's gonna be quite dead here. Striker Dragon gets searching. We have the Collapse Serpent also grabbing a Wyver Burster. Let's speed this up. Got the Boot Sector launch, banishing for the Wyver Burster. Link this off into the Pisty. Pisty and Striker Dragon will be making a baby, pointing to the same spot, reborning the Jurasworm from the grave. Linking this off into our Romulus. Romulus grabbing our Ravine, which will grab a Rocket Tracer from the deck by sending an Abso Router from the deck to the grave. And then the Boot Sector launch will special summon it from the hand. We have already used up our normal summon here. Tracer pop the field spell, summon the recharger into a Chaos Ruler. Mill the top five cards of the deck, add a light or dark among the five here, which, uh, whoa, we got a Kaiju, the star destroying Kaiju. Borland is now here, and now it's time to super poly with the Borland. Come to me. So what's interesting is, had we Borland with player priority on summon, activate the Borland to negate a card, then reborn from the grave, Super Poly can't change the Borland. But then Super Poly made it so, like, you can't change the Borland, you can't change the Super Poly, so we should have toggled on to negate on summon. Just a little detail that does make a little bit of a difference here. Triggering the regain to resummon the Druid Swarm as we now banish for the Chaos Ruler to come on forth and summon. And let's keep on going. We're gonna be adding a dragon back to our hand. Back to our hand, Collapse Serpent. We cannot resummon it. In the battle we go. We have no disruption though, and we can't make the Heretic Seal. We're locked into dark monsters only. Did we mess up the attack order here? Yeah. Did, was there another Alibur in the grave? You do not kill Alibur before a fusion because if the fusion's dealt with, it reborns from the grave. Now it's not gonna be searching on summon, but you know, there's a body on the field that should not be there. Banishment, not branded fusion to the hand. Okay, playing around, I would say, uh, an Ash. Hey, hey, off the top of the deck, why not? Quen sent Albaz from the deck to the graveyard. Cartesia special summon because we have an Albaz in the grave. Branded Banishment, reborn the properly summoned Albion to then fuse with either side of the field. Using with the Jerusalem, because it's a banish, it does not trigger the Jerusalem to send a card in the field to the grave. 
Very well done. I mean, you know, that's another thing. You're not only fusing with them, you're banishing them. Regain being triggered, returning the Druid Storm back on the deck to draw one. Kuritis is going to be reducing the entire field of non-fusions to zero attack. All righty. Albaz come forth. Albaz, please don't discard the Brain of Fusion to fuse into a Mirror Jade. Maybe, uh, actually that could unironically maybe be a play. We are banishing from the Graver to come forth and summon the Mirror Jade directly all through Ash. If you're holding on to Ash for the Branded Fusion, I didn't even need it. There you go. Isa's Balls saw the line without Branded Fusion. And generally, if you can get to Mirror Jade without getting Ashed, that's better than Branded Fusion. Let's go. And that's a thing in the TCG because they have triple Branded Fusion. I feel like they lose harder to Ash than Branded and Master Duel because you have so many other cards that don't play right into the Ash. You're less consistent than the TCG version of Branded, but you lose a lot less to Ash. Hey, hey, hey dude, uh, why, why, isn't he gamma, why isn't he maxing early to play around the Fender? Because that Gamma, that Gamma, and uh, a lot of people think it's just a level eight Synchro. Because of the Excel start of Synchro, you could put it into any deck plus a bear into floor. It is two spots, but Excel start of Synchro, Reborns the Gamma, makes a Baron to floor. That's a free Baron if you early max C. That's why we don't do it. That's why we, you don't max C to the quick launch, no. Uh, you know, we could max C now though. Probably should have max C before the normal summon of the Safer because the Striker Dragon could have been summoned. Safer gets search and grabbing the Collapse Serpent. Banishing for Collapse and yeah, we just make the Heretic Seal. This, it, it's really small, but this is why Dragon Link is very good. They do have a play under Maxi. It's not the best one, but there are some decks that have no play whatsoever. Okay, set it up. Add back a Dragon that is banished back to our hand. That's not really gonna be doing much here. We have Imperm plus Heretic Seal. So we could spin back a card back to the hand or negate a monster. The Bellion searching for the Magna Hunt. We don't have a Bissell in our hand ourselves here. Kit grabbing Branded Fusion. Return back the Branded in red. Branded Fusion time. The Albion. So Albion's going to be summoning a Lubellion, probably. Whoa, did not activate the Albion on summon. That is interesting. Super Poly discard fuse opening up the field to now get Ganlet. So the irony here is we didn't maxi early to play around Gamma, but we're probably gonna play really hard into it now. Not that big of a deal though, because Gamma's not gonna be turning into a Synchro. Are we gonna be thinking about Gamma? Probably not, you know, it's not too big of a deal. Maxi draw one off of that Gamma. Even though it's a special summon too, it's not like Long Yun that summons, then summons the token. Nibiru summons, then summons the token. This is a double summon at the same time, just one draw. You should deploy a pretty good top deck off of that Max C here. Rebellion set up a branded lost. Deploy into Albaz. Albaz, fuse with your Gamma. Trigger the lost. Search our deck. Imperm negate. I don't think so. All right. I mean, that's a big deal. The lost was dependent on the Albaz fusing and completely mess it up. What if he has another Gamma? The other Gamma in his deck is now live. The card is semi-limited. He definitely does have another Gamma. Probably not going to happen, though. We have Banishment being reset during the end phase. Cartesia add back during the end phase. Very well done. So I'm not saying you should have done this, but just to show the different lines of this deck is you could add back Cartesia. You could add a branded opening. You could toggle on, discard Cartesia, special summon Quem. Quem send an Albaz from the deck to the graveyard, for example. But then you have no other cards in the hand to discard to reborn the Albaz. It, but if you had Cartesia on the field to trigger the lost, add a card, then you have a card to discard for the Albaz. It's just different ways the deck could play. We're going to, on the summon of the Wyvern Burser, reborn that Quem. So even better than the opening, because we have Quem in the graveyard. We are now going to be fusing into Coritis, triggering the Lost, but Lost cannot grab an activatable Mercurier. It's not activatable. We need an Albas fusion for that negate. We have no disruption. Not that we could reduce the field to zero attack. That's it. Non-target reduced. This could reduce a Borland, but Borland can negate. That's likely not going to happen. Do we have an Albert in the graveyard to reborn off of the Coritis being dealt with? We do not. 
but the Coritis, only if dealt with by card effect, will be able to summon a monster from the deck. Summon a Despia or Albaz monster. Albaz has not activated this turn yet. So the Coritis could be our key to, oh, we also have the Gangrenal summoning the Wallalulu. Wallalulu, if a card leaves the extra deck, we can negate a card in the field, negating the dark, because that was the card that was moved from the extra deck. Was that the correct negate though? Maybe we should have waited. Dark uh, stealing what? Dark could have stolen a Magna Hut. We have Triple Burst Dragon, which is going to be reborning the Tracer with the effect of the Pisty. We are now making Borland Dragon. Borland Dragon to get any monster on the field, reborning a rocket from the graveyard, making our level eight synchro Borload Savage Dragon. And Borland can attack every single card in the field as the Coritus reduced your own monsters to zero. That's 35, 35 direct and lethal over the other monster without even having to attack with the Borload. Thank you very much. I mean, we would have lost anyway, right? Like Coritus did not make us lose, right? Yeah, come on now. Raisin did not get Borgered. No Borger, no Caesar. I can't believe people get away with imperming Raisin. It's a shock. I'm shook. Ain't no way. Rock of the Vanquisher, special summon the Mad Love. Searching our deck for the Snow Devil. We're gonna stake our soul, reveal a dark, summon a dark from the deck. Now we got the Borger. Funny thing about Borger is for some reason, it's third, third, the third most used card for finishing a duel by inflicting 1500 damage to your opponent. Third, number three, top three, along with Axis Code Talker for ending duels. RP Feather Duster onto the Snow Devil. Snow Devil is going to be uh, doing everything. Special summon, make us indestructible. We don't destroy the field. We don't want to lose our Rock of the Vanquisher and uh, burning for a nice amount of damage here. 1800 damage we burn in. Are we gonna remember that they are indestructible for the rest of the turn? Is it really a big deal? I don't think we really have a way to destroy them through card effect anyway. Zeus could still send them. They could still be destroyed by battle. And now we got our happy memory. Chain the maxi. We could chain another happy memory to the maxi or just negate the maxi. Very well done. Borger returned back the Raisin here. And the Rock of the Vanquisher has not summoned a monster from the hand yet. The Raisin will be able to reveal a Fire and Dark, which we do have in the hand, to destroy a column. So we're making sure to summon the Lily in the same column as the opposing monster so that the Rock of the Vanquisher does not summon that Raisin in the same one. All right, adding my friend purely. Jow Long being triggered to come forth and summon. We already have another fire to reveal. Jow Long revealed double fire to search our deck for any Vanquish Soul card. This deck is so damn good. I really think that if you invest in Vanquish Soul and they hit the deck, that Borger will be the only card they hit. I think so. Reveal three, come to me. Purely delicious memory. Purely is activating to reveal. You don't reveal on cost. We're gonna use Mad Love to, uh, do we choose if they're the same, right? You're gonna be returning a monster with the lowest defense, your choice if tied, stopping the exceed summon. Back to the hand you go, non-target spin back. Rarely do you get to use the Mad Love as disruption. Now returning back to the hand to summon the Caesar, and we are summoning the Raisin, but we waited. We waited for the Lily to activate for Raisin to chain wipe out the column. So he said, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna make an Anima suck up your jail long. So we lost out on Raisin by being a bit greedy. Come forth and summon from the deck another Lily that the Raisin, I mean, the Raisin wouldn't have stopped it, but that's what he was hoping for. Waiting, maybe it was still good to wait. Making the plump. When are we Caesar of Valley Sing? We are going to, we, we could still pop, right? No, we don't have a pop. We don't have Earth. No Earth in the hand to pop of the Caesar Valleys. What are we doing? Revealing Raisin to be indestructible like card effects. So we're doing it again. I mean, like, I, like, I don't think you should even be allowed to do that, right? Because you're already indestructible by card effects of the Snow Devil. You're just doing it again. Okay. Plump, get plump, sucking up two spell or traps from either player's graveyard. Yeah, you did chain link blog. I know, so that I should have commented on that, but I'm just thinking, like, why are you allowed to do that? You're doing something on top, like you already can't be destroyed. 
why are you allowed to do that? Not why did he do it? Why are you allowed to do that? But very well done. Stopping the plump from sucking up a fifth material. I'm very sorry that I did not comment on that. Stopping the expelli nor, that is a big play. You definitely want to do that. Chain link block the plump from them activating a quick play. We got the Infern Noble Arms grabbing a raisin from the deck. Borger return back the raisin. Come forth and summon. Snow Devil's currently control. Let me double check this. Where's the Snow Devil? No, it's not currently control. It's monsters you control cannot, it, even newly summoned ones can't be destroyed, right? It newly summoned vanquished soul monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. So that raisin that was newly summoned still could not be destroyed by card effects, then activate an effect to make it indestroyable by card effects again. So if you happy memory makes something indestructible by card effects, I don't think you could do it again on that same card, right? I actually, I think you can. I gotta double check that. We are revealing, wiping out the entire column with the raisin, add back the jail long, double indestructible. We are revealing, burning for 1500. Can we end the duel with Borger to further contribute to the statistics of Borger being a top three card finisher? We now got Book of Moon to the hand, flip a card on the field. Per Vanquish Soul Monsters, we control different names. Phoenix is a draw card. That, that's what's nutty. Does it have to destroy to draw? Destroy it then. If it destroyed, only if it destroyed it, do you get to draw a card. So technically we misplayed there by not using the Caesar Valleys first to pop, then pop with Phoenix, then draw a card. So we should be plus one card in the hand right now. Not that it really matters. Lethal damage, and of course we're finishing with the Borger. Very well done. Goddess link up with the opponent's field. Happy memory, protecting the sleepy from destruction. Come forth and summon the Lily. Lily activate, purely activates. Come to us from our deck. First, we're gonna look at the top three cards of our deck here. Randomly adding a purely card among the three. Do we grab the my friend, then grab a street or a leap? We got the leap, we leap in. So with the leap, we could potentially set up a play where we're drawing multiple cards with the sleepy in the standby phase. Potentially. We already have Delicious in the graveyard, so we got our first Sleepy, very well done. We have not even used up our normal summon yet, and now the Max C is happening. I can't believe how afraid people are of Gamma. <laughs> they just, no way, not playing into Gamma. As I said, you have to lose the Gamma to understand. Plump, get equipped with the Sleepy. No chain link block here, get it nice and plump. That's the five materials. How many sleepies we have? We have two, that's draw four. Four card draw during the standby phase. This is it. And we have no way to stop it. Draw one, draw two, draw three, draw four. And we are also completely unaffected from activated effects. Give them a maxi on top of that, why not? And let's go. <laughs> We're gonna spin back the Fenrir back in the deck. We have two more spins. Raised in the same column as the X purely nor making it so that okay so what's interesting is maybe a lot of people don't understand this but if you spin the raisin right now it can't chain wipe the fields but you could just wait for it to reveal then chain spin it so those are the two options you wait for it to activate then you spin it or you wait for it to activate then you spin it uh, that that is the two I pro that's two different scenarios but I did say the same thing but it's two different scenarios. Stake your soul, reveal a dark, summon a dark. We got the Borger here, even under the maxi, we keep on special summoning. We draw on one though. We're still special summoning. Rock of the Vanquisher, could add from the graveyard and, oh, what? Are we, we're just giving up, aren't we? We got the Dust Devil. Dust Devil is here. We're gonna flip down the x Nor, forcing the spins right here, right now. Wait, you have to change the battle position. And if you don't, because you spin it back on the deck, you don't get to flip down my x purely Nor. Okay. We're also chaining the Mad Love. We're chaining it like, what the heck is even going on here? We're trying to Borger summon from the hand as we return back the Mad Love. If we spin it back, you don't summon Borger. If we spin back this Borger, you don't flip me down. Okay, let's go. Are, are we under Nibiru yet? Uh, how many summons have we done? We've done a lot. 
All right, just like, yeah, <laughs> we have Nibiru. Five summons have definitely happened here. Give you that token so you can't summon the Fenrir, and let's go. The Vanquished Snow Devil could summon the Borger, but we're not destroying the field. It's not disruption. Yeah, okay, interesting. Holy Maxi, let's wrap this duel up and take this into game three. Purely reveal the pretty memory, show Khan into the E, purely beauty. We could suck up a card on the field. Give me that Snow Devil. Reveal two, summon the Borger. We're gonna chain Sleepy, equip onto the beauty, change the battle position of the token. Can we make it indestructible by battle also with the Delicious? Possibly. We got the Purely Streep, equip the Delicious, make the Plump. Let's keep on going, don't stop. Plump it up, equip from the graveyard, equip from the hand, and we're definitely, we're gonna win that turn. Let's do it. That's a negate, right? Right, we negate. Yup, Ash, negate. It's a pot, you negate. You just gotta do it. And maybe that's a reason for why the band should, the pot should be restricted so much, because if it's something you're definitely gonna Ash, then maybe it's too powerful to exist. Add back the Mad Love after searching for a Book of Moon, Reveal the Mad Love, get drawing, and now we are making our Rock of the Vanquisher. I do think it's a little ridiculous for Vanquish Soul to just be able to open up the Borger. That's why I do think it is, it being limited to one is a definitive possibility. It's coming, it's gonna happen. Raise in Reveal to be indestructible to trigger the Jalong to come forth and summon Reveal, double fire, search our deck for any Vanquish Soul card. Got that Snow Devil. And let's go. What is this going to really be doing? We could flip two cards on the field face down. We could add back the Borger. We could summon it. We could draw a card. We got Ash. We don't have Vanquish Soul being able to yet. We don't have it to destroy the entire field. But we could set it up where it will be able to. So we could add an Earth. That's the Earth. We could add the Dark and the Grave. And then we could destroy the entire field of monsters. Let's go. We could also raise it in the same column after returning it back to the hand to destroy a purely. So let's make sure to summon our purely's in the correct places. My friend purely being negated, come forth and summon the Lily. Lily gets searching for a street. I guess we do not want him to go into an exceed. So we do want to set up so we could uh, disrupt the Lily on activation. Let's set that up. We did not set that up, but we could flip it up. We could flip it down. So actually the Dust Devil is disruption. Flip down the Lily, stopping the Exceed. Cannot Exceed with that face down. I do not think so. Lily into Happy Memory can be quite good. And the Happy Memory, the other Happy Memory can make it indestructible from the Snow Devil. Right now, we just use Happy Memory. Protect it. Chain, please, yup. And then the Happy Memory in the hand. It works out perfectly. Very well done. Okay. Yup. This is it. Turn back. Now, the problem is, I mean, we don't have an Earth to destroy with the Caesar Valleys anyway, so that's fine. So we are protected. We don't get destroyed. We then summon a Happy that can be destroyed, but the Caesar Valleys does not have enough to reveal. Until Raisin searches for an Earth, which it can now be destroyed, the My Friend Purely will trigger off of the happiness being destroyed to add Delicious, Happy, and yeah, two cards. We, okay, we don't want to pop it. I guess he does not want to trigger the My Friend Purely. Why did we wait? Why'd you let him swing in? Why? Why, why, why? Okay, he got a free search anyway. Delicious, discard come forth and summon. We got Delicious again, summon number two. And let's see the top three cards of the deck randomly adding to our hand, which will be, you may not be thinking this, but I am. We get Overlay Zeus, wipe the field, if we want, because we battled with the Happy. Had we stopped it on the first attack, Zeus would not be an option. I'm not saying Zeus is the optimal play here, but Zeus is an option. Looks like that option is the, the option we're doing. We're, the, yep, because you let me battle. That's what we're doing. We're Zeusing it up. You are fully indestructible, but you could still be sent. We are sending you to the grave. Well, I'm gonna burn you for 15. 
Alrighty, and we still have Zeus with another field wipe. Very well done. Jalong triggering afterward to come forth and so <laughs> we're gonna wipe you again. I don't care. Off the field you go. Now we have zero disruption. Uh-huh. And we have a dead hand. <laughs> wow. This worked out. I can't believe we allowed Zeus to be summoned. The Happy got a free search, and we summoned a Zeus. Could have been stopped. My friend Purely, reveal three, randomly add one to our hand. See, that's what I love. When games last beyond turn two, you get to see the grind game. You get to see crazy plays, crazy misplays. It's unfamiliar territory. No one's really that experienced with the grind game because it rarely happens. Let's get swinging. And someone was asking, how do we become familiar with the grind game? And I didn't really have a good answer. You got to watch tournaments where the grind game happens. It could still rarely happen. You got to grind with your friends. That's good. You could grind yourself on maybe Yu-Gi-Oh! Mega Duel yourself. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe a way to do it would be friend duels with really good players at like 16,000 life. Get plump and suck up from the graveyard. We now have our four materials. Suck up the monster on the field for, wait, that's 11 materials. Huh? That's a huge X Nor. 8,300 attack, lethal damage. Anime tournament's uh, biggest grind? Yeah, well, you're grinding with uh, the anime decks, yeah. But that's a fun time. Starting off with our fusion deployment, we're gonna have to play against double bestial here. Let me turn off that music. Very well done. Grabbing the branded fusion. So what happens here, and I've been thinking about this a lot, it's that if you Albion, you play right into a bestial. It's like, I know this is good, but is it good to play into the bestial? You go Lubellion, Bistial can't stop it. So I was thinking, it, it, well, we do have Mercurius to negate, but there's double Bistial now. But anyway, I was thinking, is it better to just send literally double Albaz? You could send Albion Albaz and Fallen Albaz for Lubellion, make a Mirror Jade and chill, and then you have a Mirror Jade, and then you could banish by sending a Rinbrum. Rinbrum could reborn the Albaz. Yeah, that could get Bistial, but you still have the non-target monster banish. And if they don't have the Bistial, you still have double disruption. Negate! Double Bistial, mate. Very nice. Why is the cat going nuts? And we have Brandon White, which we can't use with an Albaz because we don't have Albaz. Banish a Mercourier and our Alibur to make our Quiritis. Mercourier adding an Albion Shrouded Dragon here, which could send Albas to the graveyard. Very good. I, I, hey, we, we got we got plays. We could brand it in white into Mirror Jade. Or uh, we could have, or we still can by adding back the Albaz that's banished. Okay, another way to do it instead of just sending Albaz to the grave. Or we could still send Albaz to the grave with the brain and high spirit. Hey, it's just like, yeah, we're doing a thing in like a circle. Fusion into the Gangrenol, and we will be soon be going into our Lubellian Mirror Jade, or we can go right into the Mirror Jade. Let's see how we do it. Kit is here to search. We still have a thrust. We haven't even thrusted yet. Thrusting into the TTT, come to me. We better look at that hand. Yes. What are we, uh, yeah, let's get that runic card out of here. No, thank you. And the Quem is a level four tuner plus level six non-tuner bestials. Got some level 10 synchro in. Making an Albion Sanctifier Dragon. Huh. Titanclad summoning Quem. Quem sending from the decks of the graveyard a retribution. Very interesting, because we got the puppet in the grave. So I was talking about protecting the Sanctifier from a Bistial. Because how do you stop Puppet? Bistial called by. But you can't stop it because if you banish early, you chain summon the Puppet. If you wait, you're gonna be protected by the Branded Lost by Fusion Summoning first. So if you Fusion Summon in response to your Fusion Summon to your Lost, you then Puppet lock them and they can't do anything. Just like that, you're screwed. Even with the Bistial, you're getting Puppet locked. You were supposed to. Did you forget? Huh? 
Could we not do it? Oh my gosh. He does not have a valid other monster to summon. There's no valid monster to... He only has Puppet and nothing else. He can't summon Titanclad. He can't summon Lubellion. There's nothing in their graveyard. He had no other valid monster. Wow. He set it up but didn't have it. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. We could now do it, but now we could get Bistealed. Uh-huh. The Bistealed's happening. <laughs> Very interesting. We do have Mercorier, though. Mercorier negate. I mean, it's like we had so much already. Did we even need to Puppet Lock him? Overkill Puppet Lock. You now cannot summon as you get the Puppet. Immediately applying. And, yep, we scooping. Very well done. You know the hand? Yeah, you do. Come forth hugging. Not doing it in the draw phase to play around a draw and lock bird. I'm not sure how popular that card is right now. Grabbing that hug in. So we're on summon number one here. We're in a tip, get searching. Now we're gonna banish card off the top of the deck. Goodbye to Quem. Quem could be a one of. We could have just gotten rid of the Quem. Well, not for good because Mercourier could recycle it. Let's recycle three, return three, draw three. Holy moly. Harp Horror banishing to come forth and summon from the deck. Orcist Nightmare is going to be sent from the deck. Oh, no, yes, it did. And we are now making Chaos Ruler. What summon are we on? Uh, geez, I just lost count. We sent, okay, we're on summon number four. One, two, three, four. Four summons here. Five summons here. Chaos Angel is unaffected from Nibiru on the fifth summon. Unaffected from activated monster effects. We have fusion deployment into smiting storm is going to be summoning from our extra deck hug in we can't search for another runic fountain okay why are we uh we're just getting in the graveyard sure okay we're just triggering the runic fountain that's all we want to do chain negate the albaz albaz negated from fusing with our fields and we're drawing three keep on losing cards off the top of the deck, not triggering any tragedies, not triggering any Mercouriers. Alubur searching for our brand of fusion, which did not get banished. It could be recycled with Kit. Come forth and summon our Albion. Albion playing into the Bistials again, but you know, not really because there's an Albaz on the field, so we could fuse with that if we want to. Goodbye to the Lubellion on the activation of the Albion. Banishing Alibur and Albaz for our Lubellion, which will discard a card to then fuse into Mirror Jade is what I'm thinking. Mirror Jade it up. Now, Chaos Angel says, unaffected by monster effects, activated. So what kind of monster effects? Activated monster effects. So when Mirror Jade activates, it's providing a lingering effect. And then the lingering effect is killing you, not the activated effect. Thus the Chaos Angel dies to Mirror Jade if Mirror Jade goes to the grave. We are now thrusting the TTT, which could just take control of the Chaos Angel if we want. Take control, we do it. Yup, it is mine. We're gonna contact Fuse into Linatus, triggering the Serenir to send a Lubellion from the deck to the graveyard. And just like that, with over 11,000 damage on the field, it's not quite lethal as we summon a Druid Swarm, which will then be banished by the Mirror Jade as the stolen Chaos Angel betrays his master, attacking directly and finishing him with Mirror Jade. Very nice. Isn't Mirror Jade on the top finisher stats? I think so. Such a funny statistic that Kunami wants us to see. Where is the, the finisher stats? Finisher rank, top four finisher, finishing the game with Mirror Jade. Thank you for watching as much of the top 16, even if it's in the background noise of whatever you're doing. YouTube is watching that and telling me if you're closing the videos early and they're yelling at me actually. So thank you very much. And with that said, I'll be seeing you in the top eight grand finale. Let's go.